We can fight our way back into the light. We can climb out of hell. One inch at a time. Now, I can't do it for you. You know, when you get old in life, things get taken from you. I mean, that's, that's, that's part of life. But you only learn that when you start losing stuff. You find out life's this game of inches. So is football. Because in either game, life or football, the margin for error is so small. On this team, we fight for that inch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that inch. We claw with our fingernails for that inch. Because we know when we add up all those inches, we're living and dying. I'll tell you this, in any fight, it's the guy who's willing to die who's going to win that inch. And I know if I'm going to have any life anymore, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that inch. Because that's what living is. The six inches in front of your face. Now I can't make you do it. You got to look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now I think you're going to see a guy who will go that inch with you. You're going to see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're going to do the same for him. That's the team, gentlemen. And either we heal now as a team or we will die as individuals. That's football, guys. That's all it is. Now, what are you going to do? You take a lesson from the dead. If we don't come together, Right now, on this hollow ground, we too will be destroyed. Just like they were. I don't care if you like each other or not, but you will respect each other. And maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll learn to play this game like men. Let me ask you something, Mr. Campbell. Uh huh. What kind of power you got? Oh, man, you know I got some soul power. Oh. What kind of power you got? What kind of question is that? I got soul power. Oh, yes, you do. Right on. Let me ask you something now, Mr. Bertia. Yes. I'm strong with you. I'm too strong. What? I'm, strong. I'm too strong. that scoreboard out there it's not about winning it's about you and your relationship to yourself and your family and your friends being perfect is about being able to look your friends in the eye and know that you didn't let them down because you told them the truth and that truth is, is that you did everything that you could. There wasn't one more thing that you could have done. Can you live in that moment as best you can with clear eyes and love in your heart? With joy in your heart. If you can do that, gentlemen, then you're perfect. 
I want you to take a moment and I want you to look each other in the eyes. I want you to put each other in your hearts forever because forever is about to happen here in just a few minutes. Today, I want to talk about our opponent this afternoon. They're bigger, faster, stronger, more experienced, and on paper, they're just better. And they know it too. But I want to tell you something that they don't know. They don't know your heart. I do. I've seen it. You have shown it to me. You have shown this coaching staff, your teammates. You have shown yourselves just exactly who you are in here. When you take that field today, you've got to lay that heart on the line, man. From the soles of your feet, with every ounce of blood you've got in your body, lay it on the line until the final whistle blows. And if you do that, If you do that, we cannot lose. We may be behind on the scoreboard at the end of the game, but if you play like that, we cannot be defeated. And we came here today to remember. Six young men and 69 others who will not be on the field with you today. They will be watching. You can bet your ass that they'll be gritting their teeth with every snap of that football. You understand me? How you play today, from this moment on, is how you will be remembered. This is your opportunity to rise from these ashes and grab glory. We are. Awesome. We are. Awesome. We are. Awesome. Funerals in today. I always ask the question, I say, man, tell me what Nike stands for. They said, oh, ink, that's easy, just do it. I said, tell me what Adidas stands for. Oh, ink, that's easy, man, impossible is nothing. I said, now tell me what you stand for. When people look at you, do they think excuses? When people look at you, do they think victory? When people look at you, do they think that's a person that's going to give me everything they got, not on some days, but on every day, and it's not going to be predicated upon if I feel like it, because I think we all know if we only worked on the days when we felt like it, none of us would get much accomplished. I'm talking about the real level of commitment. Not the commitment that falls in line if everything goes right. I'm speaking of the commitment that says, I am going to stay true to what I said I would do long after the mood that I've set it in his life. See, most people, ladies and gentlemen, are stoppable. Most people, all you have to do is tell them no. All you have to do is make it inconvenient for them. All you have to do is make it difficult for them and they're stuck. See, when you go to get your goal, don't think that all you have to do is think positive and everything's going to work out okie dokie for you. When you go to get your goal, you are sending a telegram to Murphy's Law to visit you personally. You thought you were just going to have a dream and a goal, and you were just going to wake up and just walk into the sunset. You're like, dream, boom. It don't work like... You probably heard about this before. It was, a, it was a young man who, you know, he wanted to make a lot of money, and so he went to this guru, right? He told the guru, you know, I want to be on the same level you are. And so the guru said, if you want to be on the same level I'm on, I'll meet you tomorrow at the beach at 4 a.m. He liked the beach. I said, I want to make money. I don't want to swim. Guru said, if you want to make money, I'll meet you tomorrow. 4 a.m. So the young man got there at 4 a.m. He all ready to rock and roll, got on the suit, should have worn shorts. 
the old man grabs his hand and said, how bad do you want to be successful? He said, real bad. He said, walk on out in the water. So he walks out into the water. Watch this. When he walks out into the water, it goes waist deep. So he's like, this guy crazy. Adrian, he's like, I want to make money. He got me out here swimming. I didn't ask to be a lifeguard. I want to make money. He got me in. So he said, come out a little further. Walked out a little further. Then he had it right around in this area. The Stogan area. So this old man crazy. He's making money, but he crazy. He said, come on out a little further. Came out a little further. It was right in his mouth. My man, like, I'm about to go back in here. This God is mine. So the old man said, I thought you said you wanted to be successful. He said, I do. He said, walk a little further. He came, dropped his head in, held him down, hold him down. My man getting scratching, holding him down. I got you. I know you brushed it out, but I got you. He had him held down. I need you for an illustration. He had him held down just before my man was about to pass out. He raised him up. He said, I got a question for you. Somebody answered the question for me. He said, when you were underwater, what did you want to do? Lee, I'm looking for a different word though. Than lip. What's that word? He said, I wanted to breathe. He told the guy, he said, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. I don't know how many of y'all got asthma in here today, but if you ever had an asthma attack before, you short of breath, SOB, shortness of breath, you wheezing. The only thing you're trying to do is get some air. You don't care about no basketball game. You don't care what's on TV. You don't care about nobody calling you. You don't care about a party. The only thing you care about when you're trying to breathe is to get some fresh air. That's it. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be successful, as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And I'm here to tell you, number one, that most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it better than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Some of you love sleep more than you love success. And I'm here to tell you today, if you're going to be successful, you've got to be willing to give up sleep. you got to be willing to work off for three hours of sleep, two hours. If you really want to be successful, someday you will have to stay up three days in a row. Because if you go to sleep, you might miss the opportunity to be successful. That's how bad you gotta want. You gotta go days without, listen to me, you gotta want to be successful so bad that you forget to eat. Beyonce said once she was on the set doing her thing, three days had gone by, she forgot she didn't eat. Because she was engaged. I'll never forget uh, when 50 Cent was doing this movie, I did a little research on 50, and 50 said that when he wasn't doing the movie, he was doing the soundtrack. And they said, when do you sleep, baby? Sleep. He said, sleep. Sleep is for those people who are broke. I don't sleep. He said, I got an opportunity to make the dream become a reality. Football players. How many football players? Got anybody like football in here? Raise your hand. Anybody like football? Emmitt Smith. I used to be a Cowboy fan before they did my boy Tom Landry wrong. I used to be a Cowboy fan. And watch this, there was a commercial. Emmitt Smith had won his first Super Bowl, and he had this commercial when he was lifting weights. I don't know if you saw the commercial when he was lifting, and he said, he said, Emmitt said, you know what? Ah, I won the Super Bowl, so I can rest now. He was he, he doing his bench press. So he said, I won the Super Bowl, so I can rest now. So he throws up about 325, boom. And he rests for about two seconds. Then he, boom. You see that? He'd already won a Super Bowl. He said, I think I'm going to take a rest. And he rests for how long? One second. Most of you won't be successful because when you're studying and you get tired, you quit. And I'm here to tell you today, if you got a, somebody came to my office the other day crying, I said, look, don't cry to give up. Cry to keep going. Don't cry to quit. You already in pain. You already hurt. Get a reward from it. Don't go to sleep until you succeed. Listen to me. I'm here to tell you today that you can come here, you can jump up, you can do flips, you can be excited when we give away money, but listen to me, you will never be successful until I don't have to give you a dime to do what you do. You won't be successful until you say, I don't need that money. Because I gotta be here. All right, I wanna ask you about the word elite, because when we are in your building, 
If something was called elite, it was massive. It's like, hey, this is elite. You told me my performance on college game day was elite. I got so excited just because I know how big of a word that is for your program. What is elite? Why are you guys elite? And why is that the most important word in the dictionary for Minnesota Gophers? Uh, first of all, it's a lifestyle, right? And it's a standard. And my wife, Heather, always tells me what's, what's the hardest part about being the standard is you're the standard. And you're always the standard, right? And so the Navy SEALs call themselves elite. It's a special part of the Navy, right? It's the elite of the elite. It's a group that's just different. Now, we define elite as a necktown mentality, a prefontaine face, and a farmer's alliance. I know that doesn't make any sense to all of you, but a necton is an organism that can flow through water without the water current dictating its behavior. So a great white shark is a necton. It always attacks and it's never full. It's never satisfied. You know, whether that's academically, athletically, socially, spiritually, it's never satisfied. Navy SEALs can fight on land, water, and air. They, they are never satisfied. And they're the elite of the elite. So we want them to have this always attack, never full mentality. In, in their whole life, as a husband, as a father one day, as a student athlete, as a representation of the University of Minnesota, then the prefontaine phase is just we want them to do things urgently. There's no procrastination in this program, zero. Whatever you can do tomorrow, find a way to do it today, right? Don't put it off to tomorrow, no matter what. And that's what we talk to our players about. And then the last part is the Farmers Alliance, and that's about trust. My farm is right next to your farm. Your farm is just as important to mine as mine because the, corn, the seeds of corn are on top. And the wind will dictate uh, what our, our crop is like. So you have to take care of each other, and you have to love each other, and you have to be very selfless. So that's what elite is to us. I know it's a big definition. It sounds like all these fancy slogans and words, and oh my gosh, he's just a slogan guy. It's simple. It's just finding a way to be better today than you were yesterday and fighting human nature. Coach.